Welcome class, this is Dr. Mike, and welcome to Anaconda. I just want to give a quick overview as we get started into this course, uh, Python for data analysis, and Anaconda, and a few basic tips on the Jupyter Notebook. It's going to be very important um, to understand how to use Jupyter Notebook, uh, as really 99% of the work you're going to do for this course will be submitted and um, generated and submitted in this format. So. Uh, there is stuff posted about how to install it um, in anaconda.com, downloads. You should be able to find a Windows, Mac, and Linux version. Um, so I won't go into the installation. There is actually a docsanaconda.com, anaconda install. So you can find installation information here, how to get installed and running. So I won't go over that for now. So hopefully you can read that over and get installed. But let's talk about its actual use. So I have the Anaconda Navigator here in my applications already installed. Get that to launch. So the Anaconda Navigator has several Python environments to work in. It also manages things called libraries. Uh, later on, we're going to use libraries in this course, such as NumPy and Pandas. But for now, though, uh, just know that this is what you want, this Jupyter Notebook. Again, you can feel free to explore anything else <laughs> on your own time. <laughs> but for now, we're going to launch Jupyter Notebook. This is going to actually launch in the web browser. Depends on your operating system, you might get a command line come up, which is normal. And this is my Jupyter Notebook. You can see here I have a basic file navigator. So let's work out downloads for now. So show me anything that's running, any running notebooks. Uh, clusters is not really needed for this course. Quit logout, pretty self-explanatory. I can actually upload a notebook and review it. So if you get sent a notebook, or in this case, if you have a notebook as an assignment, which you do in this course several times, you will be given a IPython notebook to upload and complete. For now, though, let's go and look create a new Python 3 notebook. OK, so the basics here. On top here is our notebook name. So I'm going to call this Example. File, pretty standard fair stuff here. Of course, overview. Edit, copy, paste, view, insert cells. And we'll talk about cells in a second. The kernel. The kernel is really what runs in the background. It is what does the work. It is the Python kernel. Widgets and so on. And there's a help thing here. So some good help references here. Sometimes Jupyter Notebook is also called IPython. It actually is a branch of Jupyter. And it really does operate the same. So there's several things here for help. So how does this work? Everything works in Jupyter Notebook with cells. So this is a cell right here, cell number one. It is an input cell. And this dropdown is going to tell me what kind of cell I want this to be. By default, it's a code cell. We have raw, which is just that. It's raw text. Nothing to do there. If I do run, it's raw text cell. And I get a new cell bundle beneath it that is a code cell. I can make this a heading. And you can see here we use markdowns. And you can research markdowns online. It's pretty easy. So that can be, that's a title. If I run that, I got a nice big hello there. If I double click on it, so I'm going to make that a heading two. It's much smaller. I can make a bolded list. One with a dash, two. So here's some simple markdown ability in these markdown cells. 
very nice to create a, a very presentable IPython notebook file. All right, so let's talk about the other cells we have, Markdown, Raw, and Heading. So Markdown, Raw, well, again, Raw is just plain text. Maybe I want to put an example link, but I don't want to actually create a hyperlink. So let's take, oh, let's take this. Maybe I want to take this example here. I want to give you an example link, but I don't actually want to do markdown. It will actually become a hyperlink, which could be handy. But let's say I don't want this to actually become a hyperlink. I need just the raw text. So that's what raw is good for. Now we just have a plain text. Nothing there. So, so we, but the heart, the heart of the Jupyter Notebook is the code block. It is the default. And this is where we plug in pieces of Python code. And as you go through the course, you're going to work with variables and code a lot, um, also inputting data. And you might want to run in small chunks. So let's say A equals 10. If I run that, I get no error. And there's no output, because there's nothing here to output. Let's say if I do print A. And I get the output block right there. I can go back, I can rerun. Let's change this. This variable has been set and it runs through this entire notebook as I create blocks. So I change it here, I rerun it, and this again, you can see it's updated. A couple of tips. The tab key is very handy. So as I type in IMP, hit tab, it actually completed it with the import command. And see it sort of turned a shade of green or bold. Import time. Now if I do something wrong, let's do import, it imports time. Let's try that. Let's do a typo. You can see I get an error output here. Output blocks can be expanded and contracted if I double click on them. Sometimes I will have an input block with a large amount of text. Maybe I input uh, several pages of a text file, like a CSV file. Uh, you can control how much is shown by double clicking on it. You can expand to none or to all. And if it's very long and you double click again, you actually will get a scroll bar. So it'll try to do the best fit for the window. Again, we're not going to go over into coding exactly, but I want to show you some other tips here. The tab key, again, is very handy. Let's go and create name equals Dr. Mike. Run that. I'm going to print, hit N, tab, and look what I get. I actually get a dropdown of items that will actually work within this parameter. In this case, the name variable, which is right here. So I can click on it if I want, or use my arrow keys and select it. So again, if I run that, there you go. So as I move through the notebook, I can do a save as, or save a checkpoint. Checkpoints are great if you're doing a very complex work and you want to try something and go back and maybe roll back to a previous check checkpoint. So very handy for that. Um, so let's say I'm done with this assignment. Let's create a large output real quick, though. So before I in, all right, in range, cap key there, E. Going to print i on that. So we have a very large thing here. It's 50, 0 through 49. There you go. I clicked on the side here. You can see the scroll bar now. I wanted to give you an example of that. I double click again. 
it's actually totally closed. So that's an example of handling the output. So a very nice way to work with large, large amount of input files or a large amount of output. Anytime in this, I can actually do markdown. Run that. So you can create a really a nice looking, easy to read worksheet that you can will probably end up sharing with other students for code review. Example, you can see a nice simple text. Another nice markdown item is three dashes, and you get, which is hard to see on my screen, but you get a uh, horizontal line. So you either will open and or complete uh, from scratch a brand new notebook. So let's go ahead and, and say this is a notebook I'm done with. I can click save. It does auto save every so often, but it's good to go ahead and save. So now I'm done. I'm going to close and halt my notebook. Now you can see here in my downloads is this example file. So let's go ahead and look at that. This is the file right here. It's all self-contained. I can take this file and submit this for grading, and you want to do that for some assignments. Again, you can open up assignments too. So let's go ahead and grab a week one assignment. So I'm going to grab a copy of this right here. I'm going to put it in downloads because let me show you how to use it. So paste. There we go. Actually, refresh for me. But I say there's a refresh button here. If it doesn't see a refresh, so I can just click on the running code, and there you go. So you can actually step through this and click Run or Shift Enter. And there we go. So there's the output and so on. So this is an example of a notebook. A nice thing about this too is you can actually copy and paste code from one cell, paste, run it again. The idea is for when you're doing data exploration, it's very handy to go ahead and see things you ran and tried, maybe different analysis. And you don't want to overwrite this, but you want to do a different version of it. So I copy this code and I paste it in a brand new cell, make my changes, run it again. And I can see the changes themselves in the output. So this is a very fantastic tool for data analysis and just coding in general with Python. So anyways, we'll leave it off here. I'm going to say I am done with this. Close and halt. And that's finally the page. So when I'm done here too, I can hit quit. And my notebook is shut down. If you have run on Mac, you'll get this little background here. You'll get a terminal and quit that. So that will be an uh, introduction to some tips on Jupyter Notebook. As we go through the course, uh, we will actually, I will show you more, more and more tips. Uh, hope that helped out. Thank you.